Hi, I'm Rob from RobNuffPhoto.com and in today's video I'm going to be suggesting the fourth lens that you may want to buy for your Canon 600D um, Rebel T3i. Now when I say the fourth lens, it's not really a lens, it's more of an attachment, but you'll come to that in a minute. So in previous videos, if you go back and look at the videos on, the, on YouTube, you'll know that um, after you've been shooting with your DSLR for a while, your 18 to 55 lens, you'll probably get a little bit frustrated by the focal length. It's nice and wide, but it doesn't get really, doesn't get you really close to the action, especially if you're doing, say, anything to do with uh, wildlife or, or sports, or you generally just want to zoom in a little bit. And so the second lens I think you should buy is the 55 to 250 IS uh, f4 to f5.6. Superb lens, sharp, great for portraits, great for landscapes. Uh, sorry, great for um, any any work we need to zoom in and then the third lens would be a nifty 50 the f1.8 bargain price fantastic quality super narrow depth of field should you wish to play around with that to give you nice looking portraits um, a great overall lens as well but a little bit telephoto so we kind of with those three lenses with the uh, the kit lens the 18 to 55 with the zoom lens the 55 to 250 and with the 518 you know we've covered an awful lot of bases there we can go from fairly wide angle um, for for most shots to to pretty zoomed in as well for for uh, say sports or wildlife and stuff like that we can do great portraits and stuff like that with the, with a 51a however the the area of photography that we can't really do much easily with those lenses is true um, macro photography so what we're talking about here is getting very very close to our subjects and focusing very very close now I know that all of these lenses have a little macro flower on them and they'll tell you what the minimum focusing distance is so for example on the 18 to 55 the closest focusing distance is 25 centimeters away which is about that, that, that far away about 10 inches and on the 55 to 250 the closest focus distance is 1.1 meters now before I talk about this next thing, the 55 to 250 does make a very nice macro lens for, for lots of situations actually. The only thing you've got to remember is to zoom all the way out and then you do your macro stuff and maybe use a bit of manual focus. Um, and then the 50 millimeter, I don't know if it actually says on it. No, I can't see anything about a minimum focus distance on there. But if we want to get really close to take nice photos of say the centers of flowers or insects and things like that, we could spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and get a dedicated macro lens. Or we could get what I suggest is your fourth lens, but it's really a lens accessory, which is these, which are extension tubes. Now, these are manual extension tubes, but you can buy electronic ones as well. Now, quite simply, what these do, he says, let me set up the 55 to 250, let's take the lens head up as well. What these do, is they go in between your lens and your camera body and they just move the lens away from the camera body and what that does is it kind of you can imagine when you when you're taking a photograph of something say this lens cap here the light is kind of going in and getting bound you know getting bent and, and moved and then it comes out the back and then it hits the, the plane of the sensor or the film um, and imagine if you if you could look through the lens like that, you would you know you would see it, wouldn't it? It would be on your eyeball. Now, if you were to move the lens further away, what's going to happen is that the image that's being projected out the back of the lens onto the sensor or onto the film is going to get bigger, isn't it? Because it's going further away. Remember when you were at school and you'd have the they'd have the projector. If the teacher wanted to make the picture bigger, they would move the projector back. And then, then the picture would get bigger. Um, now, <laughs> there's no glass. There's no elements in these things. They're just hollow. If I open that up, you can see. It's just hollow. So there's no glass in there to distort the image or reduce the quality. However, if you remember those school days, as the projector moved back, so as the lens gets further away from the, the camera body, the image that was on the projector screen or the image that's being projected into the camera gets dimmer so you're losing light so you've got to use a wider aperture or a longer shutter speed to make up for that the other thing as well is you tend to find the imperfections in your focusing or the lens itself 
get magnified as well. So let's pop this on so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, now extension tubes, they come in a set, normally screwed together, and so you can decide how much magnification you want. Obviously you've got one end which fits the camera, one end that fits the lens, so you can't do away with those, but I could take out this one, this number two, and I can screw it back together again, like so. It just goes onto there, like that. Take my 600D, just taking the lens off it. This then goes in just as if it was a lens and locked in. And then, he said, I'm doing that. And this should snap in like that. So it looks a bit like a teleconverter. You know, these, remember that thing I had on the, uh, if you've seen the uh, 100, 300 video, but there's nothing in there. So literally all it's doing is moving the lens further away from the camera so that that image kind of gets blown up so we can get in a lot, lot closer. But the disadvantage is you're losing light. But the main disadvantage when you're using uh, something like this with uh, with the EF or EFS lenses is the fact that now there's no electronic circuitry between the lens and the camera. So there's no, they can't talk to each other at all. And there's nothing on the lens that enables me to set the aperture. It's a bit rough, isn't it? Also, I've lost IS because there's no power going to the lens, and I've also lost autofocus. So I've got to switch the switch to manual focus and focus that way. Now, generally, though, <coughs> when you're using extension tubes, the way you focus is you tend to zoom in and out. Or I would highly recommend this if you're taking pictures of static things like flowers or anything that doesn't move, have your camera on a tripod because you're probably going to be using longer shutter speeds anyway. Um, or if you, you want to do it outside, you know, handheld, make sure it's a nice sunny day, or maybe introduce some flash as well. But with the Canon DSLRs, all you do is you just go to aperture priority mode, and the camera just sees how much light is coming in, and then it sets the shutter speed accordingly. It ignores the fact that it doesn't know what lens is attached to the front. Sometimes you might have to play with, with exposure compensation to get the uh, exposure just right, but other, otherwise it's fairly simple to do. And then what you've got to do is you've got to use photographer's luck. So take lots and lots of photographs. I would put your camera onto um, burst mode. Keep an eye on your shutter speed. If you're using a long lens, something like the 50 to 55 to 250, if I'm using this much magnification, I would be looking handheld. I would want to be shooting at, at least the 500th of a second. So adjust your um, ISO to make sure that that's happening or go to, oh, oh, Auto ISO probably won't work very well, so you want to go to manual ISO, stick it up to 800 or 1600, whatever you need to get the shutter speed up, 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 and take lots and lots of photographs so you you know get rid of the blurred ones, or most likely you're going to get rid of the ones that are blurred because of focusing issues, because your depth of field when you're using extension tubes is really, really small indeed. Um, you can pick these extension tubes up very cheap from eBay, just make sure you get the right ones. There are electronic ones, I haven't given them a go. I'm fairly happy with these, um, but I'm going to leave you with one one tip. Now, because there's no electronics in between the camera and the lens, um, as I say, we can't control the aperture. So the aperture is at its maximum. Well, we know that with lenses, um, they don't perform at their best when they're at their maximum aperture. But there's nothing on the outside of the Canon lens where you can change it. But there's a little trick. Um, somebody actually reminded me of it on an email the other day. Um, I can't remember the name, sorry, so if you did, thank you very much. Now to do this trick, so to set the maximum set the aperture on the lens without it being, well, with it being connected to the camera, what you have to do, put the lens back onto your camera, like so, and turn your camera on. And then what we need to do is set the aperture to, to what you want. I don't know, set, set it to f8. So I've set the camera to f8 now. Just because I've put the switch on the back to f8, doesn't mean the aperture is set to f8 because whenever you're using a camera and you're looking through the viewfinder the lens is wide open now it does that so you can actually see because if it was actually looking at f8 it would be a bit dim and the way you can see that is if you press your um, depth of field preview button or your that, that button there might even can you hear that what that does is it closes up the aperture you might be able to see it actually you see that opening and closing as I press it 
So that means once I've got that pressed, I can look through the, the viewfinder and that will give me a really good idea about the depth of field I'm getting. But handily as well, it keeps the aperture shut. So what you do is you press your depth of field preview button, so the aperture has gone tight, and then you press the blend release button and then you spin it off. And that means that my aperture is now set to that tighter size. So now when I put it on to my extension tubes, and then put it all onto my camera. Instead of shooting this lens at, uh, I don't know, if it's zoomed all the way in f4, if it's, if it's zoomed all the way f5.6, I'm shooting at a tighter aperture. I'm shooting at say, f8, which is gonna give me a little bit more depth of field. I'm gonna struggle with the light, but maybe I'm using a tripod, maybe I'm using a flash, maybe I'm using a high aperture, and it's gonna make my photos that little bit sharper. So there we go, the fourth lens, lens attachment thing you should buy for your Canon EOS 600D Rebel T3i some extension tubes and explore the world of macro photography because literally you'll be focusing on things that are that far away from that far away from the uh, from the lens and you won't believe the photographs you can get absolutely stunning well my name is Rob from robnanphoto.com remember you can email me scalespeeder at gmail.com thanks for watching